I'm a horrible racist. You are. But that's okay because we love you anyway. You uh, learn from the best. So we're going to do a very quick episode uh, about a topic called uh, code switching. And directly after this, we're going to do an episode about positive masculinity. But uh, we're going to do that with another guest. So there'll be another video right after this. We're not going to do it in the same one. But welcome. If you want to type in the chat and contribute, go right ahead. If you think you're here to learn about programming, oh, are you in for a surprise? But that's okay. Anyway. Wow, Nutty, you are popping plosive Am I? really popping powerfully. Plosives powerful peanut packages. It's not Paul. It's Paul. Paul. Oh, that Paul. How's that? Is that better? Paul. Paul, Small. Peter, Paul, and Mary. Better? Wall. Yes, much better. Okay, thank you. I go pepper, poppy, poop. See the small ball bounce on the tall wall. By the way, folks, if you're watching, this is all the behind the scenes of a podcast. Oh, and I forgot. What 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 pen is what Nutty pen using? are you using today, Nutty? Nutty is using the uh, Pilot Metropolitan Tiger. It is a pearl essence. Yes, that's for those plosives that I was popping. A pearl essence white pen, and in it. Is it a powerful white pen? A powerful. I believe it's a Noodler's Burgundy that I am writing with, mm. which is a very nice color. But I haven't actually written anything, so I can't show you that. All right. <clears throat> Hello, Mi Ugh. Hello, Mixed Nut Cases. <laughs> this is Nuke Joss. Welcome to Nutty Bites. Today, we're going to be talking about code switching. And I'll tell you what that is. But first, I want to introduce our guest uh, with me, as always. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Tech. <laughs> and uh, our, our often co-hosts from the Talk Nerdy to Me podcast, we've got... <laughs> I'm Chen. I wrote something down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, what's going on, y'all? I'm Jason. He wrote something down and just ruined it. I really did. Like, mm. So what were you going to say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. All right. So, <laughs> code switching is a word that uh, we've recently learned for a phenomena do, 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 that we see uh, from both tech and Jason pretty often. It's when a speaker alternates between two or more languages or language varieties in the context of a single conversation. The ability to go from one language to another between two people and just like that. Uh, tech does this very often between French and English. And Jason does this very often between how he speaks with his family and how he speaks on podcast. I'm very proper on my podcast. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Indeed. So before that, I'd like to talk about some media examples of this for the audience. Mm, yes. If they have no idea what we're talking about, I'd like to bring up the Guy Ritchie films. Specifically, uh, Snatch, you know, with, with the whole Cockney rhyming slang and how characters will go between this uh, very peculiar, very um, locked into one geographical area style of rhyming slang and then back into a conversational English that we can understand or how in Snatch some characters can go between a very, very thick pikey accent and then back into an English that the audience can understand. And even at some points, you know, they have to resort to subtitles so we can sort of get some of the in jokes and as great of a movie as Snatch is, and it is right at the top of the list, of one of my favorite movies, uh, I think that a better example of code switching was done in the movie that came before called Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And uh, if you like Snatch and you haven't seen it, I recommend everybody goes to see Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And uh, the DVD extras have even got a, a whole thing on how to, um, how to speak in a Cockney rhyming slang and how the whole language works. And... Uh, the whole movie itself is actually pretty hilarious. Yeah, they yeah. You, you get a good bit of that also in The Kingsman. Like when um, yeah, when Eggsy is going from being Eggsy to being one of the Kingsmen. Um, right, and they have to completely deprogram his working class accent and get him yeah, speaking it, proper English again. 
Also, if you haven't seen The Kingsman, do it because great things happen when you save the world from princesses. Or four percent. Except they have horrible taste in shoes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Oxford's over Brogue's my left butt cheek. And and while not completely code switching, you do kind of see this with accents, or at least Tech sees this with accents quite often. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it seems the nearer we get to New York, the thicker my accent becomes. It's amazing. I just have to. I'd have to get you to pronounce the proper name for dihydrogen monoxide. And uh, the the, clo- the the farther it goes from water to water, the <laughs> funnier it gets. Um, and and I there there's a, a a cute story about we're at dinner with somebody that we knew was from California, and he's talking, and I'm listening to him, <laughs> and I'm listening to him, and I hear his accent, and I just kind of lean in and go, what borough? No, that wasn't it. It was what borough? Whatever. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> and he just looks at me, and his California accent drops, and he goes, Brooklyn. <laughs> no, it was incorrect, because there was no R in it. It was Brooklyn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, I it's heard like the she, R. It's like she kissed the first two letters, like that booklet. Like, yeah, I think so. so then he and I started chatting, and everybody around us was like, "Where, where did those accents come from?" <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's like it's like you dropped the cloaking device and just repe- revealed your bird of prey. Also, exactly. yeah, it is painted in Nick's colors for some reason. <laughs> oh, there are. Yeah. Hey. Empire colors, right? There you go. This is weird uh, blue and orange. <laughs> also works for the Mets uh, and the Islanders. Uh, so, so um, there are a few things though that uh, my accent has not dropped at all on, and that's like generally when I say water or nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, but uh, you know, Tech and and Jason, you have more experience with this, so uh. Tech, do you want to tell the little story of uh, driving uh, home or, or back to Jason's while we were in Virginia? And he, he calls his aunt. <laughs> As we're driving back to Jason's and Jen's place, he just says, hold on, let me call my aunt real quick. And he dials up the telephone and we could only hear one half of the conversation. But all of a sudden, our our good friend Jason, our good friend the podcaster. Mr. Eloquent himself. Mr. Eloquence, Mr. Diction, Mr. The Rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane train. All of a sudden, oh, it turns into the goodest of the good old boys. You could hear the audible coveralls. You could hear <laughs> the, the wheat sheaf in his teeth. Uh, you you could you could hear there were banjos playing banjos in uh, where did those come from? It must have been a ringtone or something. But oh my god, did that and every pronunciation of every single word changed. But not only that, the cadence changed, which is a big thing in language. It's that individual languages and individual dialects speak with different cadences. We uh, different em- emphasis on different syllables completely change. How words are pronounced. Like we just said water or water is just one example. But when Jason talked to his family, oh my gosh, I have never heard that before. One day, one day you'll have the pleasure of seeing me angry. <laughs> hearing you say things. And it's again completely different. Well, what I thought was really interesting is how much slower you speak. There's the cadence thing. Yeah. Which I think uh, is is one of the things that might prevent me from fully code switching. Like if I moved down south, because that was always difficult for me. Uh, working in southern schools was uh, speaking slow enough for for the students. Yeah, my my actual my pitch changes too. Like it actually mm-hmm. I, I, because when I'm talking on podcasting, I talk faster, so my pitch is higher. Family, my pitch is it's kind of around this range, and I'm like, what's going on? How you doing? You know, and it's or, even lower. Yeah. And a lot of the times things I say, I cannot say on your podcast because your podcast is PG-13. Um, but it's a soft PG-13. I can't even get my two F-bombs. Yes. And and I will say, I could not believe the language you used with your aunt. You know what? I learned it from her. <laughs> yeah. 
the, 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 this this definitely tells you the difference in our families there. Although uh, the, the the big joke was when Tech and I started dating and I had to tell him that he could not use English swears because they actually meant something uh, in my family. But in his family, because you're French, first language, they don't count. In 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 French, uh, most of the, the big nasty swear words are blasphemous. They're against the Catholic Church. Uh, English, what the English consider swears in on French TV, you'll hear them on kids shows <laughs> because they're, they're literally um, it, it, it's it, they're literally they're just body parts and like, you know, bodily functions. And therefore, who cares? Like to F the dog literally translated from French is to stuff the dog. Which also doesn't sound pleasant for the right. dog because like, the, <laughs> the, 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 neither of those are things you should do to an animal. <laughs> no, but the um, but the the um, the an f bomb in French is literally the verb to stuff, and you know I'll stuff a turkey, I'll stuff a couch, I'll stuff a stuffed animal. Well, triple stuff a turducken. Yeah, triple stuff turducken, exactly. But it's not a it's not a nasty word like it is in English. Um and then you know, vice versa, you know, some of like the heftiest of all French swears are like the little golden house on the side of the altar that the chalice is kept in, and the chalice itself. And if I said tabernacle chalice. In English, holy host, holy host, you know, those are just, yep, okay, those are parts of a church, all right. I think, I think the the closest one uh, would be uh, just saying Christ, which in some families would not be good. Well, a, a really good one is, can I say, can I say the angry version of darn on here, or do I have to stick to darn it? Oh no, no, no. you can say the angry version of darn. right. So damn. Yeah, we uh, damn it in English in French is literally holy host. Which we once taught an English guy that it meant sincerity and honesty. <laughs> you can used, say the French swears so on here. <laughs> if, he used, if he used it as a suffix at the end of a sentence. So we got him to end all of his sentences with C or usci, which is the, 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 the French word for holy host and used literally as damn it. And when he met one of like the VIPs. <laughs> He goes, you know, he's adding, he's just basically swearing at this dude. And the dude turns to the rest of the crowd in English and goes, why does this man swear to me? <laughs> now, is it, was this Poplamus? No, no, this is a different story. No, so, uh, one of the things that I was unaware of with tech is how much he code switches uh, with with French because all through our dating we would sometimes watch movies that were in French that didn't have subtitles and he could just translate them for me live as they were going um, and he'll go from talking to me to talking to his mom on the phone going back and forth between French and English boom 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 no problems um, his his sister cannot do this uh she she's unable to be able to go back and forth or to do live translating because she just doesn't have the skill which some people's brains can do and some people's brains can't and it doesn't make one person deficient it just means that you know some you know some people are double jointed some people can curl their tongues uh Jen, uh, growing up in Alaska, in, in a culture that's, you know, mixed with, you know, native languages and English, did you ex ever experience any of this? Was there ever any times that you would see people or maybe yourself would switch back and forth between languages? Um, not really, actually, because the language that I grew up around, the Klingon language, was not used very often. It was used a lot in schools and it was used a lot with the um, elders. Mm hmm. So I do like I I was able to talk to a lot of elders that couldn't speak English. We actually had three in my town that did not speak English at all. Wow. Where my mom owned a restaurant, they'd come in all the time. So I would be talking to them and tell mom their order. Nobody would know what I was saying at all. She trained the um, dog with Clinkett, by the way. I did. <laughs> nice. Cool. So but that's only good. You are a code switcher. 
Yeah, I guess they're able to do that live translate. If you haven't, you haven't had to use it. I haven't had, it's been like 15 years. It, it's been a really long time. How much have you retained? Um, I could probably still introduce myself in Clink It. I think. Um, I know a few words, but it would it would take me at least a couple of days to get caught back up to actually be able to have a conversation. So, we need to uh, the, the important things. You need to be able to buy gas, ask where the bathroom is, and order food, and if say this is Jen from the Talk Nerdy to Me podcast, and you're listening to Nutty Bites. I don't think there's a clinket word for podcast. I'm she, just she can guessing. figure something out. <laughs> 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 I'll, no, I'll work on that. You know, it's funny <laughs> you're talking about swears because I think swears and insults are closely related. And it's funny because in different dialects and different languages, insults can be completely different. And they're most of the time, especially especially when like if I go back home and I'm talking to my family or I'm talking to people that I know from where I grew up, if I call somebody soft, like that's an insult. Like those words like that can be very in, are normally innocuous, but depending on how you use it, it can be very very bad. You know, yeah. if someone is soft, or you say, oh, I'm trying to think of one. I would if I was angry and talking about somebody, I would know it wholeheartedly. Um, matter of fact, I can't say some of those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Most of those. We should have done this on my podcast. Um, or say, or if you say someone is an F boy, right? Mm -hmm. you well, know, we, should do it, we should do this episode again on your podcast, but change accents. Just throwing <laughs> out there. I love how uh, like both sides is referencing like bad words. Dude, like how bad words sound dude, that are is different one of in one language and how like you say you, you, that's a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. when you're talking to family in your accent or when you're really mad. Like, but this is what you're you're referencing so much is it's one of the easiest way to learn a language is to learn how to curse in the language. The, the, swearing the, is language. Mm -hmm. Swearing is completely language. And 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 it's the the conversation and vernacular of a language. It's one of those things that really annoys me when you hear those people that are like I don't swear. Those words aren't in my vocabulary. Then they'll stub their toe and they'll go, "Oh, son of a snapper turtle!" No, all, you still swore. Yeah, you still exclaimed. Way, you just changed the words. By the way, I tell all those people to go f themselves. By the right, way, right? Exactly. It's like, oh, son of a snapper turtle, that really hurt. No, you still swore. You just changed the words. Now, if you want a really hard challenge, live your life without exclamations. Live a life without the gosh darns That's and hard. the and the freaking hex and uh, the, the he double hockey sticks. And all of those, if, if live oh, a gosh. life, huh? oh, gosh. oh gosh, live a life without exclamation, That's and un and understand where the real challenge is. If you're like, I just don't swear because those words aren't in my vocabulary, and I don't know why I'm choosing this voice to do this. Because thing. that's how they sound. Well, and the other thing is, there's the whole idea of, uh, what is it? If if you're swearing, it's because you don't know other words, and it's like, no, it's because I'm choosing not to use other <laughs> words. I, I know exactly what word I'm looking for, and it begins with a hard F U. So, Steve Pritchard has joined us in the chat. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Mm. And uh, he says it's an interesting perspective. Uh, Jason, I had a German professor in college that firmly believed in teaching us verbal self-defense as part of the curriculum. Which <laughs> I think, again, uh, falls That's German for dropping F-bombs. That's yes, what that is. That's, that's German for dropping uh, F-bombs. German is the most aggressive sounding language. It is. It is. Uh, oh, you know, and uh, uh, Steve loves your t-shirt. Tech. Duh. By uh, the way, <laughs> no, it's, it's funny. You know, he brought that up because when I was in high school, I had a professor by the name of Dr. Fossier. Okay, and so yeah. Dr. Fossier is one of the smartest people I have ever met. This dude knew multiple languages. I think it was ranging around seven and I'm talking about fluent. I watched him and his wife have a conversation that went from French to Spanish to German to something else that I didn't know. And they completely understood one another, like wholeheartedly. And like all his children had knew at least two or three different languages. Like it was ridiculous. 
And that, it's you're good. Oh, I was just going to say that reminds me of a certain uh, Dane and Swede that uh, Tech and I know. They they met online. They met in English, got married, uh, live in Denmark together, and uh, yeah, have have learned each other's languages and and are multilinguists at this point. Yeah, you know it's funny about language also. Still jumping off of you know insults. When you talked about exclamations, an exclamation you don't hear outside of like Southern black people is when you tell someone you out your cotton picking mine. Mm, you know, uh, you do hear that outside of black people. And um, it was one of those things that uh, somebody brought it up and they're like, isn't that racist? And we're like, oh, yeah. Hmm. It's one of those things is like, oh, well, I'm not going to say that anymore. <laughs> It, it, and it's it's interesting because dude trust me i heard that a lot growing up because they're like what are, you, what are you doing yeah i'll tell you um there, there is a certain yiddish word that starts with a shm, and um it's one of those things that you'll hear it on tv but in new york growing up like that is scandalous to say no example a really good example uh, if I got um, if if I got the short end of a deal and I say that I got gyp, yeah, that's pretty bad. Yep, gyp for gypsy, as in an insult against the Romani people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I stopped using that one. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, I've stopped using it. So Feruza Balk, okay, we're good now. So um, I love we can be you. friends. Yeah, yes, we do love you. Um, oh, she's amazing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so. It Go ahead, Jason. No, I was going to say, like, that's it's kind of funny because in language, you're like a lot of these things slip through the cracks, like Jip, uh, you know, cotton dick in mind. But I will, you know, I think, Nutty, when you showed me the video that we watched on this, yeah. um, and it talked about how um, slaves used Ebonics and, you know, truncated, you know, collections of different languages to speak so that slave owners wouldn't know that they were actually communicating so fluently with one another you got there's extrapolations of that nowadays like prime example um there's a rapper by the name of oh god what's his name papoose thank you um he's a new york rapper named papoose and he does a thing he did a, um he did a rap song called alphabetical slaughter where he raps the alphabet from a to z and he does it using different things and it's like you know mob deep song shook right if you're shook, that means you're afraid of someone. And yeah. he talks about different things like, you know, if you sneak somebody or you got snuck, meaning someone hit you unexpectedly, you know, and it's those type of different things that come out of language and the extrapolation of where they came from. Yeah. And and it's really cool that you mentioned how um, a lot of uh, the vernacular came from trying to be able to speak without people knowing what they're talking about. Uh, because a lot of people that do that and, and actively code switch, they do it for that purpose. And one of the uh, great examples I have is uh, when, when a Southerner tells someone, oh, bless your heart. Oh, They don't mean bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, that whole passive aggressive thing of ending an argument with "God bless." Yeah, I yeah. love. I think it was mind. bastard in the south. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm. It's like one of the the best takeaways I've got from uh, Mrs. Brown is that that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Um, but, I used to tell I used to tell people to f off. Now I just say that's, that's nice. nice. Another another example of this switching of language, but a lot nicer, is if you think to the old spiritual song. Mm -hmm. kumbaya what does kumbaya actually mean well it's a truncation yeah it's a truncation of the english phrase come by here someone's crying lord come by here oh lord come by here they're asking for deliverance yeah but they've they've truncated it into this in into this this this, this beautiful lilt this lyrical form and I'm also reminded of uh, there was somebody that you knew that uh, there was a reggae song on and they said, what language is that? And we're like, it's English. That's all English. But yeah, oh, yeah. It, was that it. it was Destination Calabria where, where yeah. the girl is speaking with the Jamaican Patois. And uh, they're like, 
What language is that? That's English. That's not English. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. <laughs> uh, so one other thing, and I'm going to put a link to the um, video that sparked all of this uh, uh, MTV's Decoded. But one of the things that that episode brought up, uh, I would often have fun with Jason. And I have been proven very, very wrong by the way that he says the word ask. <laughs> Because Jason will ask you a question. He will not ask you a question. You know, will. And he will say ambulance and birthday. Amber lamps. And I love birthday. it, by the way. But this video is like, yeah, axe is the original way. It's how it was always said to the point that it used to be spelled with an X. Yeah, I am and very old. I am horribly wrong. I'm very old and archaic, so you know. Yes, well, you know, you're 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 a classic gentleman. So, um, one of the things that doesn't translate though is tone. No, and this is something that that I have a problem with in switching between languages is that between French and English, uh, between you know Germanic languages and Romantic languages, is that tones uh, don't translate. So, uh, a good example is sarcasm because the tone used for French sarcasm is very different than the tone used for English sarcasm. And if I use English sarcasm in French, I sound really stupid. <laughs> if I use the French, the French tone for sarcasm in English, I sound very, very angry. And I get, I, I get into problems with this at work all the time where I have to, you know, being in a bilingual workplace where I have to switch constantly back and forth between French and English, my tone won't change exactly on cue with the language. And all of a sudden, people like, why is he mad at us? <laughs> not. That caused a lot of arguments at the beginning of our marriage. This is cause, yeah, this <laughs> causes a lot, a lot of arguments. Um, there's a great movie that a great Canadian movie that everybody needs to see <sighs> called Bon Cop Bad Cop. It's so good. It is uh, good. You can watch it with subtitles. You can watch it without. Uh, you can set the subtitles to be either only French, only English, or both. Because the entire movie is bilingual. It is an Ontario cop and a Quebec cop that are trying to solve a murder where they find a body perched on top of the Welcome to Ontario, Bienvenue at Quebec sign between the two provinces. The body is dead on top. So because they're arguing over jurisdiction, both of these cops have to solve the murder together. But both of them are too proud to speak the other's language. <laughs> and it's just more fun to insult each other. So the entire movie is a French cop only speaking French, an English cop only speaking English. They end up like sleeping with each other's sisters or ex-wives. It's fantastic. It's and fantastic. And it's just this, this, this beautiful like chaos. At one point, they're like, trying to understand each other's languages and why they can't pronounce things correctly. And there's a whole scene in French where as they're like beating up a mobster and shoving him into the trunk of a car, they're properly using French conjugation, like verbal conjugation rules to conjugate swear words. It's fantastic. It's I, a great movie. I, I will say it's it's a great cop movie and it's a really fun comedy uh, po poking at both of the cultures. But when you get to, and I'm just going to say the punchline, when you get to Viva le Crab, Quebec Libre, you will be on the floor crying. You're laughing so hard. I still use that joke at work, by the way, teaching uh, uh, unilingual Anglophones uh, that when they're in front of French students, uh, the best thing you can say when you're very, very proud of them and they've done very well, you say vive le Québec libre. And I usually get a big laugh out of the French crowd because that means long live a free Quebec. Yeah. I, I wonder which is if like, the younger which is, English guys just don't know it. Everybody gets a good chuckle. We all we all remember what that is. Uh, I am not a separatist by any no. means. It's just, <laughs> it, it's, it's a funny zinger. So uh, Steve says, um, Axe. It's an accent for the Crystal Lake Vir area of Virginia, specifically around some summer camp there. <laughs> I believe Jason might be familiar with that. Uh, and his name is Jason. Exactly. Oh, gosh. That was the joke. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us uh, while we talk about code switching. Uh, this was a quick episode. I hope you liked it. But if you have examples of code switching maybe in media or in your own lives, uh, please listen to the links at the end of the podcast and uh, let us know and uh, we'll have a conversation about it. 
Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. I also want to make sure that we thank our patrons, uh, Jason, our big daddy, uh, who is the top big daddy, uh, by the way, he needs everyone to know because he's paying a dollar more. I use Price is Right mentality. <laughs> he He's Price is Right. He is the top big daddy. $1, uh, Bob. Thank $1, you, dollar Bob. Daddy. Uh, Dave, Aaron Jackson. Also, those two are also big daddies. And then next we've got a uh, thank you to Susanna, Andy Luke, longtime patron Shane Poole. Uh, thank you to Beth who just graduated and got her doctorate. Congratulations. Uh, con thank you to the Radical Geek and to our guest in the chat, Steve Pritchard. Thank you to Rich the TT, to Dagny, to uh, Mike, Ken Kennedy, Lynette McFad McFadden, uh, Rora Lee, Susan, uh, Melissa Bartell, the bathtub mermaid, Indeed. Jason's favorite, uh, Kinsey, Ian, Harold, Patrick, and often, usually, Nick. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll talk to you. Oh, and uh, you can find uh, Jen and Jason at TalkNerdyToMePodcast.com. Their uh, stuff will be in the show notes, links to all of that. We're just rushing off, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye. I'd give, I'd give the bathtub mermaid my southern dialect any time she wishes. <laughs> and to Steve in the chat, we're going to start a new video for the next episode where we're going to be talking about positive masculinity. And we'll see you real soon.